Hello my darlings, I hope you're all well and are having a fabulous day and have had an even better week. In tonight's video, we are doing a quick review and recap of Celebrity Big Brother 2024, episode five, Eviction Night. So before we go any further, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. If you haven't watched this evening's episode of Celebrity Big Brother, this video will contain spoilers so let's just put it out there the person that got evicted tonight was gary gary's gone home guys and to be honest i'm glad because i don't really feel like he had a place in the house like he just did not have a place in the house he shouldn't have been there because he's not a celebrity outside of the stories the well i say stories but it's more regurgitated opinions that's because he didn't really bring anything new to the table right apart from those regurgitated opinions of one of the most controversial you know royal couples in you know in the world right now harry and Meghan, he really didn't have anything else to say or share do you know what i mean so anyway he's gone we'll talk about him a bit later last night was crazy and today was i want to call it the calm the calm after the storm so the first person to hit the dining rooms tonight was lauren and big brother was like you know lauren are you okay how are you feeling about being nominated and you know where, where you at and you know she was like i'm okay but it's not the best feeling you know being voted for say like what are you on lauren this is a game <laughs> you're here as part of a game although the nominations are personal the premise of being nominated there's nothing personal about it you voted for two other people everybody had two votes it's it's fair game what is your problem she's acting like she's being singled out do you know what i mean anyway um so she said to Big Brother, she definitely thinks Zizi voted for her. And she then went on to say that she thinks Colson also voted for her. And still couldn't get the man's name right. So she's still being quite rude. She doesn't even know what she's doing. Let's just face it. So she said that she feels like they definitely voted. And ultimately she was like, I don't want to go home. I hope the public don't vote for me. So anyway, another bit of random tea. Sharon and Louis were having a chat and Simon Cowell came up and basically Sharon said that she would never speak to him again. So they fell out years ago and it is public. Um, but Louis was like, will you ever speak to Simon, sorry, again? And she was like, I'll never speak to him again. Never. I don't even know what he would have to do to get me to come around. And basically, um, years and years and years ago, the mask singer asked Sharon to be a judge on the show. And she turned it down because she presumed that she was going to be on the next season of X Factor. So she turned it down, came around to the next season of X Factor. And then all of a sudden she got a call saying, sorry, we don't need you anymore. And she was like, what the? I've turned down a massive opportunity and now you don't want me. And Simon, I think this is the year that um, Cheryl Cole and, Cheryl Cole and, what's her name? Nicole, Nicole came about. And basically Simon said to her, look, we just, we just need a change basically. Um, and they jolted her. So she could never forgive him for that because ultimately she lost an, she lost an opportunity, which is fair enough. Anyway, um, and, and also as well, rather interestingly, they spoke about um, doing X Factor and saying that it was interesting, you know, in the first few seasons, but afterwards the whole nature of the show became a bit monotonous and just felt like a bit of a farce. And I found that quite interesting. And then I thought, side-eye, because Louis, you did it for more seasons than Sharon. So, see, these people are all playing a very big game, right? At the end of the day, it's all about a paycheck. Anyway, moving on very quickly. So, Big Brother created what was called a celestial retreat. 
and there were yoga mats and loads of crystals and basically they made the house like a bit of an oasis and a retreat and it was really gorgeous and really nice and peaceful and I feel like they really needed that peaceful serene vibe after all of the all of the nastiness that happened 24 hours before because it did get a bit nasty it did get a bit nasty anyway so they were sitting around in a healing circle and they each got asked some questions and the questions were random they picked them out of a bowl of petals and there were questions written on each petal and question from Fern to Gary was how have you found peace within yourself or are you still looking for it and basically he says he's always striving for peace or he feels like peace is something that you know you should always strive for but he definitely hasn't got it he doesn't know what peace is in his life he literally became a national villain overnight this guy like he larges himself up so much he really does so i thought to myself today let me google him let me find out what the history is because i really don't understand you know what it is like what is this big question mark you know um so it turns out number one that he battered his ex-wife and was charged with assault and had a 12 month I believe suspended sentence um, and had to attend rehabilitation that's all I seen and actually Big Brother got quite a bit of stick about allowing him on the show because of that because they were saying you know at the end of the day him being on the show could be triggering to women who have been affected by domestic violence so Mm. I knew my side eye towards this guy was warranted anyway um, so that was that but it, in that moment he answered the question and I thanked him for answering the question moved on ZZ had a question for Marisha and it was what part do you hide of yourself because of fear or judgment and Marisha basically says that she hides insecurities and her fears because ultimately every day she has to wake up and be a be this wonderful fabulous successful hard-working person because ultimately people her family namely are relying on her and you know she has to make it because she has to support them um she also said she's given up on the idea or she's put aside then her desires to be married and or to have children to fulfill her career to chase after her dreams so she feels like she sacrificed a lot to be here and she was tearful and that was a very that was a good moment because I don't feel like we've seen enough of her you don't know her she's from the US she obviously works in the UK in the West End but you know we, we don't know her. she's not a popular celebrity the next question came from Louis and it was to Bradley and he asked him to reveal what his biggest regret was that he needs to let go of and Bradley's response to that was he grew up um, so Bradley is neurodiv neurodivergent he is autistic and he found this out when he was a young child so as a young person he was you know struggling you know in life and then found out that he was autistic and also he's gay so he was hiding both of those things navigating teenagehood hiding you know two crucial points of information about himself and ultimately he says that he wished that he never done that he wished that he was able to live in his truth um, and that is one of his biggest regrets and he's so glad that he's done it now and it was another tearful moment for him um, I really like Bradley I think he's such a sweetie like he really is I mean I didn't know again I didn't know him before he came into this before he came into Celebrity Big Brother but yeah I'm really developing a bit of a soft spot for him he's really opening up the final question was to Sharon and it was who inspires you the most in this room and she said it was Levi Roots 
And the reason is because Levi has found serenity and serenity is the thing that she's striving for. She's never woken up without serenity and Levi has that and that's what she wants. And I thought that was really interesting as well. It was, a, it was, the conversations that were happening were actually very powerful and it was a massive shift in, com, you know, in contrast to what was going on last night. She answered that very beautifully and Levi, again, just burst into tears. And um, he's quite an emotional guy. He's quite an emotional guy by the looks of things because this is the second outburst he's had and I actually feel like it's good, you know, because a lot of times men hold back from ex expressing their emotions, especially in that way. So it's really good to see that he's so open with his emotions. So he burst into tears and he's basically like, you know, he's had issues. He's had a lot of issues and he's had a lot of dark times. And one of his biggest and darkest times is his kids coming out publicly or two of his children, sorry. So, that story, Levi has got eight children. He mentioned in a few of the earlier episodes, he's got eight children by seven different mothers. And it's apparent that there is some issues with the dynamics and the relationship between him and the children. Two of his children spoke out against him publicly and basically called him a bad dad. And he's never been able to get over that. So he's been battling so him finding peace and healing through other things is kind of like a bit of a coping mechanism. That's what I'm kind of getting from this. Um, and ultimately he's hoping for his kids to come back around to him one day. But what he was saying is that he's, you know, he's still not healed and he's hoping to, you know, continue to heal. And then he did go into the diary room after the um, retreat ended and he basically said you know what being in that circle like taking part in that exercise nearly took him apart because he's still got open wounds so so that was quite interesting we're seeing a few more layers to him um next scene big brother called everybody to the sofas and announced that somebody had broken the rules in fact two people had broken the rules and that was none other than lauren and louis and they broke the rules by speculating and naming names about who voted for Lauren. And Big Brother recalled a conversation that took place at 1.10 a.m. in the morning between Louis and Lauren. And basically Lauren was heard saying, ZZ hates me. So whilst this conversation's going on, you know, the whole room are like, oh my God, oh my God. And ultimately, before they even mentioned Zizi's name, I feel Zizi knew that they were talking about her. So this is all because of Orange Gate, which happened yesterday, right? So anyway, Big Brother was like, you're gonna be punished and you need to stand in the wheelie bin of shame. So after the announcement, um, Zizi ultimately got up and she just kind of stormed out of the room and um, Lauren and Louis were fast on her heels. And they got into the room and they basically had a bit of a blowout and Zizi was like, look, I'm a, I'm a words person. Like, I don't like the fact that you're saying I hate you when I don't hate you. That's a really strong word to use over something that's basically so trivial. And Lauren was like, well, what you said about me was derogatory. And Zizi was like, again with the words, like, I didn't say anything derogatory about you. All I said was, you don't like the way I cut the oranges up or whatever it is she said. Um, how is that derogatory? It's the truth, isn't it? You didn't like the way I cut the oranges up. And Lauren was like, yeah, it is true. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're making it seem derogatory and you were sitting there talking about me in front of me, but not to me. And Zizi was basically like, well, look, I was having the conversation with the others. I didn't really feel like it was that much of a big deal. I wasn't having the conversation behind your back. I was transparent about it. And they were having their backwards and forwards. Meanwhile, Louis sitting down, watching the both of them like a tennis match and keeping stum. 
which was to be expected really. Zizi's like, stop saying that I hate you. I don't hate you. Like, it's wrong. Stop saying that and stop saying that, you know, I was being derogatory about you. Like, stop using these words. You know what you're doing when you're using these words. By you using these words against me, it's perpetuating the narrative that I am that and other people will feel like I am that towards them. Which I think, fair enough, because she was using very harsh words for a very trivial situation, ultimately. They had their screaming match and everyone went into the garden because Louis and Lauren were going to go into the wheelie bin of shame. The tension was quite thick, very, very thick. Nobody in the, other, in the house knew that they had an argument. And then I think Louis and Lauren came downstairs and I don't know who they told, but basically got revealed that they had a screaming match. I think Louis, Louis, Louis told everybody that they had a screaming match. Um, Sharon did say she felt sorry for Zizi because it doesn't look right. And I thought, mm, I'm glad you're saying that. Everyone's in the garden now. Lauren comes out in the garden. She knows that everybody knows that they've had an argument and you know, it's all very heightened and comes over to Zizi and she's like, look, can we have a hug? Because everybody in this room is now affected by what's going on. Like, let's just hug it out. And Zizi was like, I don't want to hug you, Lauren. Like, I'm, I don't want to hug you because why do you want to give me a hug? Do you want to give me a hug because you're apologizing to me? Or do you want to give me a hug so you can pacify everybody else in the room? And she was like, it's making everybody else feel awkward. And she was like, well, I don't want to hug you. I don't want to hug you. So then that also continued to keep the bitterness brewing and everybody was like, it was all lies. It was a lot, it was a lot to be honest. So Louie and her got into the bin, <laughs> the wheelie bin of shame and Big Brother told them that they need to write a, an apology letter and the apology letter that they wrote was ridiculous. It said, we are deeply sorry for any hurt we caused. It was innocent banter and that was it. Love, Lauren and Louis. Because they genuinely thought that their conversation was acceptable. The letter was a joke. Anyway, after they got out of the wheelie bin of shame, Louis went into the bedroom to speak to Zizi. And he went in off his own accord and he was just like, Zizi, you know, will you talk to Lauren? Will you forgive her? Please forgive her. She doesn't mean anything by all of this. She's just really upset, you know, because she's being nominated. She hasn't got a bad bone in her body. Will you forgive her? And, you know, laying it on thick and he was like, Lauren hasn't sent me. I've come off my own accord. <laughs> I've, come off, I've come off my own accord. By the way, you were great today. You were both great today. I'm thinking, Louis, what were they great at? Great at arguing or great at defending themselves? What are you on? And his whole approach and demeanor towards Zizi like had significantly changed because yesterday you had so much disdain for the lady, and then all of a sudden today. You're touching her, you're stroking her, you're calling her intelligent, you're saying that she's clever, you're saying that she's talented. When yesterday you'd said that she's done nothing in life. So I did call Louis a weasel and I feel like that's just true behaviour of a weasel because that's what he is. Anyway, Zizi was like, look Louis, I'm not I've got no problem talking to, to Lauren and I've got no problem in squashing the situation. She just explained herself again and justified herself and you know he was like I understand, I understand. So Louis and Lauren had to read their, their apology letter out to the whole house and Lauren stood there waiting for a standing ovation and literally everybody burst into a fit of laughter because they were like what the hell is this letter? After the apology letter was read out, Lauren and Zizi had a private conversation in the rooms. And she was like, I'm sorry for saying the word hate. Zizi was like, I didn't want to hug you because I was still upset. I wasn't trying to continue to keep up the bitterness, but I just found it odd that you wanted to hug me to pacify everybody else rather than 
coming from the perspective of apologizing me because of what had happened and also why would you try and hug me when you could see that I was visibly still upset as you was you know and Lauren was basically like everything just got blown out of proportion basically everything became heightened when I found out that I was nominated and I just got really upset and everything just went left because ultimately it was just a conversation about oranges and it was about preference and basically they apologised to each other, had their grown woman conversation and closed Orange Gate for good. So that was that. And then came the reveal of who would be evicted. And as we know, it was none other than Gary Goldman. He has left the house. 